Yes, thanks for staying with us. So we're now going to talk about loads of stuff, including life after menopause. And if that word gave you a bit of a fright, then, sir, maybe you're part of the problem. Yes, you, I'm looking at you. <laughs> Indeed you are. Now, joining us now to talk about her new book, Wise Up, and the empowerment that comes with life after menopause is author and columnist Barbara Scully. Barbara, it's an absolute <laughs> pleasure and delight to have you on this. I've missed you so much. I know, I'm I know. fizzling. We're giddy all morning, are we? Chattering like BFFs. <laughs> yeah, we, we are BFFs. Couldn't wait to get Barbara on the sofa. But do you Bar know it's actually just over a year ago the last time I was in here oh for one goodness. of the last... Uh, yeah, oh, It's been a while. You're allowed to catch up. It's, now, yeah. I have to say, Wise Up, and there's a wise owl on the front of your book, mm. and and I have to say, it doesn't Looks surprise like me. me in the least <laughs> that you've written it because you've always had a book in you. Um, yeah, I guess I, yeah, I guess I always wanted to write a book. Um, and one of the great things about COVID was that it swept away all the excuses. I mean, in order to write a book, particularly if you're a new author, you're never sure if it's ever going to get published. So you have to kind of invest an awful lot of unpaid time into a project that possibly will actually go nowhere. So COVID allowed me that opportunity, I, you know, to just, there was nothing else to do. Yeah. There was no other work going on. Sure, we did no work going on. The two of us were likely to kill each other. So <laughs> um, we have a, a home office out in the garden and he was revamping his website and doing various stuff. And I was trying to write my book and my daughter who's studying Roisin, um, was in her final year of uh, her um, college course. And in the end, she said to me, I can't work in this office anymore. You are so loud typing out your little thoughts <laughs> into your a book. Thoughts. So she calls this my book of little thoughts. <laughs> little thoughts. Speaking about the book little of little thoughts. thoughts, you've obviously, you know, written columns for yeah. over 10 years, whether it was a personal piece yeah. or a travel feature. You know, aside from COVID and, you know, why now in your life? Why a book now? Well, that's a really good question. And actually, Thank it's, you. Yeah, it's a very good question because it's part of what I address in the book. Because okay. one of the great things about getting older um, is that you have this, you know the way we talk about younger women and the biological clock, this kind of like ticking that goes on. When you get to kind of post-menopause, kind of mid-50s on, there's another clock ticking in the wings of your life, which is the one that says, if you want to do this, you're going to have to kind of start. Like, if not <laughs> do now, it now, when are you going Before to do it? Because you're going to run out of, like, mm. road. Um, so that, that is a great motivator. You know, I always wanted to write a book, and I suddenly thought, you know, I have got to start writing a book if that's what I want to do. So, um, yeah. Yeah, but I remember one of the first conversations we had many, <laughs> many moons ago. Um, God, it's over a decade yeah. ago now, I'd say. And I was giving out, I was on yet another diet, going, oh, for God's sake. Blah, blah, blah. And like, <laughs> Elaine, would you look at yourself? It's fine. Stop beating yourself up about these things. And there's nothing wrong with the way you look. Anyone looks, just embrace yourself and as you are. And you've always had that kind of ethos. Um, yeah. But it, it's, and it's something that a lot of women talk about now. But I think we talk about so much, but we don't act it out in our own lives. But you have just gone, feck it all. I'm getting older, I'm embracing it. You grew out the, the colour in the hair during COVID. You and said, frightened right. the living daylights out of Fiona Looney. You, uh, still yeah, getting well, uh, the a few of us, so the roots were the other way. And you were like, you know what, this is me, this is the way I am, and this is where we all should be comfortable in our own skin, no matter what age we are. Because you yeah. touch on sexism, on this and ageism, and yeah. that's huge. It's rife still yeah. in, uh, in our society. Absolutely. And I mean, as you know, I'm the mother of three girls. So I'm very conscious um, of, you know, my own experience and my experience of parenting them. And, and we know that, like, girls and women learn from a very early age that no matter what you do, you will be judged first and foremost on how you look. Mm. So no matter what True. else you achieve, if yeah. you're not looking hot or cute while you're doing it, it's really not worth as much. And that's awful. Um, so one of the things that happens as you get older, and I mean, I say in the book, probably around the time I turned 40, I, which, you know, you start to get this kind of like... I don't really care as much anymore as I used to about other people's opinions about either how I look or what my life choices are. And that don't care gets bigger with every decade that goes past. So I'm now at a stage where I really don't give you a You couldn't give a continent until you know what, basically. I really don't, you know, and I think it's very important. And it's one, if I could give a gift to older women, it would be that gift. Because I think along with the judgment that all women have about how they look, as you get older, that is increased when you also come up against this, oh, yeah, yeah, but you should be fighting ageing. Do you know, you should, fighting ageing is really important because to age is seen to fail, is mm. to be seen to fail. And fighting ageing is the greatest, you know, kind of um, fraud that has been perpetrated against women. You cannot fight ageing. 
I mean, by all means, if you want to spend your time and your money on getting whatever you want in your face or wherever. Yeah, because it's like a personal fine. choice of it's how people choice. want to age individually. Absolutely. And I wouldn't judge or tell anybody that what they should or shouldn't do. But what I am saying is you shouldn't feel you have to. Yeah. There is a choice there to do it your way. Because ageing is a privilege. Absolutely. Tonight to many. Not, oh, and you know, we've yeah. lost friends along the way, yeah. like at this stage. So, I mean, I turned 60 in January. Well, you look um, fabulous. Oh, thank you, darling. Um, but like, God, you know, you're so old. And what do you <laughs> <laughs> I've been slagged. Don't give out to me. We're friends. I'm only slagging her. We touched years. on the word menopause there yeah. in the you know the intro and about life after menopause. Yeah. Do you think menopause in 2022 is still a taboo word and people are still uncomfortable about having that conversation about menopause? I think it's changing and I think that's really positive because yeah. I think menopause in the last, kind of certainly even in the last year, it has come out of the shadows. You know, previously menopause was always seen as one of these things that hid under the umbrella of women's issues, women's yeah. issues. Whereas now it's coming out of the shadows, it's entering the mainstream and it's being talked about. I do have a worry that so much of that talk at the moment focuses on the negative aspects and the difficulties of menopause, which, you know, are certainly a lot of women or some women would have, you know, a difficult time through menopause. I didn't, and a lot of women don't. But I think the conversation sometimes can obscure the fact that menopause is only a portal. It's only a, um, a waiting room. Once you go through it, you're into this amazing period of your life when, period, pardon the pun. When biological freedom. Biological freedom. You're free from, from the first time since you're about 12 or 13. Your female biology has receded completely. That's an amazing freedom. And then on top of that, you probably, if you're a mother, your children are, they mightn't be financially independent. They might be still living with you, bless them. <laughs> but Is that personal experience there? Yep, might be. <laughs> um, <Perhaps>. Might be. <laughs> but... They don't need you anymore 24-7. So you've that freedom. And then if you've been cleverer than we were, your mortgage might be paid and you might have a few more quid in your pocket. All of that adds up to this incredible period of life when if you've looked after your health, and that's another issue, yeah. you still have the energy and you have the creativity and you have the interest to pursue whatever it is you want to pursue now for you. Looking after your health, I know that yeah. was a major issue for yeah. you recently because in an all our um, joking about diets <clears> over the years, you would no, I'm going to eat the cake, I'm going to drink the wine, I'm going to have whatever I want. And then literally, you had that <laughs> something put a, 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 a stop to your trot. <laughs> yeah, reality bites. Yeah. Yeah, as my doctor said, you get away with that until, until you stop getting away with that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I made a virtue out of, yeah, baking and eating. I was yeah. my own baking's biggest fan. I had made a virtue out of hating exercise and not engaging with that at all. And as a result, I developed type 2 diabetes, which is the diabetes you generally give to yourself. Um, and that came with a load of guilt. I did feel mm. guilty because, again, as I said, as you get older, you've lost friends along the way who've, you know, been dealt diseases that are random, like cancer, whereas diabetes I kind of gave to myself. So it was a real kick in the ass and it really woke me up to the fact that I needed to change my diet and overhaul my lifestyle. Thankfully, the good news about diabetes, which is a serious illness if you don't look after it, is that you can, you can put it into remission. Mm. And I thankfully have put mine into remission, uh, thanks to me bike. And the shock I got the sugar. pictures of you on Instagram going round in a bike. I said, "What in the name of God has happened, Barbara Scully?" <laughs> I was there. She is with her. I'm thing. debating. I've said to yeah. my husband Arthur, getting a bicycle because I can't drive. Do you know and something? I'm debating getting a bike, a helmet, and just getting out there. Do you know something? It is life changing. Yeah. And I'm saying that as somebody you know, hated exercise. <laughs> so hated do I. it. Can't my abide. bike. My daughter in Australia came home for Christmas in 2019 and bought me a bike. It's you like only... Saul on the road to Damascus, the epiphany you had there. It was brilliant, but a bike is freedom and it's independence and it makes you feel young. It made you like I'm... OK, I know a bike too. Go and get a bike. I hadn't cycled since I was about Cycled 12. together, I'd pay money to see I love the last line, go get a bike. <laughs> yeah, get a bike. <laughs> and another wise tip from Barbara. Yeah. Get a bike. Yeah. Barbara, I have to say, it's Thank such so a much. delight having you on the show. Today. And in Thank fairness, you so much. you've always given me great advice and the advice in that is absolutely sterling. So thank you so much for Can I just say it's, early. it's available, it'll be in bookshops in the next couple of weeks. Oh, it's available on my website. I was just about to say that. Actually. Oh, where are you? Sorry. It's available in all good books. <laughs> and at Barbara's website at barbarascully.com. There you go. I'm going to be Googling bikes after this with your Friday Sports Roundup next. Don't go anywhere. I am going to get...